Well, a very good evening, uh, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Thank you so much for joining me for what I'm hoping is going to be a very nice chilled evening of editing some landscape photos in Lightroom. Uh, if you are new to this, I am Andy and I am a photographer and uh, my channel is all about the photography I do. A little bit of a behind the scenes insight into how I take some of my photos and of course how I then take them into programs like Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One, what have you. Um, and basically play around with the sliders until I'm vaguely happy with how they look. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing this evening. If we just pop over into Lightroom, we can have a quick look at some of the shots uh, that we're going to be having a look at. I've chosen these these 10. These are some ones from uh, Mull where I've just been, like this moody seascape um, thing to remind us that the sea is still there and is always a force to be reckoned with. Um, but before that, um, we should start by addressing a couple of things. First of all, this is the cardigan mug um, that was uh, mentioned in uh, Luke Westaway's stream. It is indeed just a cardigan. This was handmade. Actually, this was made by someone on Mull. Um, I bought it from a little uh, stall that they were selling from. And it, um, I wasn't convinced that it was going to necessarily hold tea without leaking, but it so far has done. And the tea is excellent. Of course, if you're going to be editing, you need to be comfortable. You need a nice, a nice, comfortable environment and a good cup of tea. I think the better the tea, the better the photos. That is always the rule. Uh, of course, um, huge thanks to Luke for shouting out my channel and encouraging everyone to come over here. Or I suppose it's uh, Mrs. Mabel, maybe who um, uh, I should be thanking. Um, she was the one that sent you all, apparently. Um, so that's very, very, very kind um, of her. She, well, a good, a good woman, a very sensible woman, based on her actions uh, in the story. Um, but definitely, thank you to Luke for uh, for doing that. Having a, there's a, quite a few people in the comments. This is very encouraging. Thank you all so much for uh, uh, for joining. <laughs> My God, that is amazing hair, says Elise. Thank you very much. It has grown out somewhat in the past uh, six months of lockdown, when I haven't really wanted to be that close to people to have uh, a haircut. Um, oh, Maple. Yes, it's Maple. Sorry, not Mabel. I was um, uh, I was wrong. But um, yes. Uh, thank you to Mrs. Maple. I was I was definitely listening. I was mostly listening. I was also setting up a live stream. But um, other things that I've got in order to make my uh, live stream even better, which I sort of put just in frame over here, is a special edition orange twirl, um, which Cadbury in the UK have started to reissue after I managed to not get many of them uh, last time they were out. These are delicious so I thought I'm gonna have to get one of those to keep my sugar levels sky high throughout this whole process. I'm gonna give it a few people, a uh, few people, a few minutes for um, other people to join. Um, it's three minutes past nine um, and I did say I'd start at nine. Um, but yes, again, thank you for joining me. I want to try and do more live streams and I'll be very interested to know whether they are of interest. My hope with these, and certainly with this one tonight, is that this is going to be less about trying to teach people how to use Lightroom, more of a, a bit of a calming, hopefully, experience of just kind of seeing how I would um, edit some uh, some photos in Lightroom with a lot of uh, there's a lot of anxiety in the world and uh, for me editing it, my photos um, is always very very calming I mean obviously it's calming going out and taking lovely landscape photos to begin with but I kind of always feel the, the process of sitting down taking a breath being in a comfortable chair and just kind of working on the photos is hugely cathartic um, really really kind of washes away a lot of um, uh, stresses of the day so it's it's one that I always like doing I often spend evenings just kind of going through those photos um, and even going through old photos it doesn't need to be ones I've just gone and taken particularly at the moment when we're still sort of in lockdown um, I live in Scotland and Scotland's rules about lockdown have, have uh, are tightening up again and cases are rising so it's it's not a good time to be planning big photography trips, um, but it is a great time to go through your existing gallery of photos and see if there's anything in there that can um, uh, 
that can maybe use some fresh love that you can maybe load back into Lightroom, play with some new tools um, and uh, and just try a different look and see what you can do. It doesn't need to be Lightroom either. Um, if you are watching this, hoping for some uh, tips, but you haven't quite decided to spend the money on a, on a Lightroom subscription, then uh, you can take a look at Snapseed, which is an app which is free on iOS and on Android. It's made by Google. It's an incredibly powerful editor. In fact, the video that I put out last weekend it was all about um, editing landscapes in Snapseed and it costs nothing and it's an amazing editor. So do go and check, well, go and check my video out. First of all, go and click like and tell all your friends. But um, also just go and get the app. It's great and it, and it costs nothing. Um, and it's a really great way of playing around with your photos, trying something a little bit different. Um, but I think on that note, I'm going to dive actually into Lightroom at this point. We've given people six of the Queen's minutes. So I think it is time to actually go in and do something uh, and fulfill the promise that I laid out in the headline of this live stream, which I think was Lightroom editing. So uh, yeah, I've got these 10 to start. I don't know exactly which one to start with. So I'm going to do it pretty much at random. And I think I'm going to choose this one. Uh, this one is one from Mull. This one was a good example of uh, just keeping your eye out while you're traveling around. This one, actually, I literally pulled up at the side of the road um, when I was doing my little road trip around the island of Mull, which is a tiny little island off the west coast of um, uh, uh, west coast of Scotland. Beautiful, beautiful spot, and um, I just saw this uh, saw this really nice sort of craggy cliff edge with the mountains in the background, the clouds up ahead. And very quickly just sort of pulled over, jumped out of the car, got my camera, got my, I think I was shooting this on a, a yeah, a 200 mil uh, lens, a 70 to 200 mil at, at um, 122 millimeters. So quite zoomed in in order to uh, get a, a compressed um, a compressed shot and, and kind of narrow down the composition so that I'm just getting these, uh, these rocks in going across here and this nice kind of, I quite like this bank of, uh, ferns down here is excuse me sort of the lower part of the frame what um what i don't like so much is that the light is a little bit flat these mountains in the background they're not lit up particularly they're just sort of a background bit of uh, something or other but the focus of this scene really is is these rocks over here so let's go from library and we'll go into develop let's just hide this information in the top right quick look though this is F9, ISO 200, and um, that just gives me a shutter speed of, of uh, a 500th of a second. Pretty speedy, which is good because I was hand-holding the shot. It was quick and it was quite zoomed in. So it's fast enough that everything looks nice and sharp, which is good. Probably won't look very sharp on here on the live stream because of YouTube compression, which is uh, something that every photographer loves when they've got a nice high resolution camera and then it gets compressed to mush. Um, Shy Violet says, I might be stupid, but I want to sit on the edge of those cliffs. Yeah, I don't blame you. And actually, um, later on in the evening, the light did get beautiful. In fact, one of the shots that I'm coming to um, in a little bit was like an evening shot and it was absolutely gorgeous. But unfortunately, I'd driven further on uh, than this point here. Speaking of which, actually, I probably should promote my own video. Promo, promote, maybe is the word, or promo. Um, I did do, in fact, two weeks ago now, a whole video on my entire Mull trip. Um, I think it's just called Photographing Mull, something like that will be very easy to find in my back catalog. Um, and I show kind of how I, what I looked for in these images, how I took them, uh, some of the troubles that I had, certainly when it comes to things like weather. Um, but um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with that video and it's 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 doing quite well at the moment, which is good because one of those ones that it took a lot of time and effort to put together. Um, so it, it means quite a lot. And these images mean quite a lot to me for the same reason. Okay, let's actually do some editing. First up with this, straight away, let's just bring in the crop tool and we're going to straighten it up because we've got this bank of the lock going away in the distance and that should be really kind of our horizon that's where it should be straight but again I was hand holding shooting quickly my angles were a little bit skew whiff 
sip of tea. So we've straightened that up. Um, the actual crop itself I don't think is too bad. What I think I might do is just pull it down a little bit at the top. So we're going to try and have this a little bit obey the rule of thirds and the way that it's doing this sort of this the top of this uh, uh, sort of mid-ground mountain is in line with this and also kind of the, where it slopes down and meets the water um, is in line here as well we've got the two peaks of the mountains up in the middle third so you know the composition is not superb by any means but it's vaguely in line um, it's important as well not to overly stress about things like the rule of thirds when you're taking photos because rules are meant to be broken and if you have everything composed in exactly the same way well your photos could end up look looking a little similar so it's, it's good to play around with have things in the extreme left the extreme right and play with negative space in a way and get creative photography is a brilliant um, hobby to get into I find it incredibly relaxing and as both a profession and a hobby um, so I think it's it's always worth kind of just taking your camera out wandering around shooting away and not playing by any rules just doing whatever you think looks good because that's all that matters straight away though we've neatened that up and I think it already looks better um, I'm going to up the exposure ever so slightly I'm going to bring the highlights down because these this sky up here is a little bit uh, is a little bit bright and so bringing that highlight down as you can see it's just bringing that sky under control we see a little bit more detail in those clouds we're going to emphasize that a little bit more in a moment but for now that's all I'm going to do the shadows shadows might bring down just a little bit now what you might be noticing already the way that I really like to edit all the time when I'm in Lightroom or anything I never really kind of look at an image and immediately think I know exactly what I want to do to this photo I, I rarely have like an end goal so the way that I like to edit is to literally just grab a slider in this case the white start moving it up don't like that start moving it down don't like that either leave it in the middle and I'll do that with most things because you don't really know exactly what effect it's going to have until you start to move it one way or the other and then you can decide in this case moving the black slider down a little bit is actually helping bring a bit more definition into these shadows on here which I think sort of sculpts uh, this rock face a little bit more which I think looks pretty good um, I'm not going to do anything with the contrast because it's a little contrasty already if we bring that up at this point I think it's going to just start making things a little bit crunchy so I'm going to reset that but we are going to come back to our contrast after I've had um, a little look into the comments oh, people are people are um, leaving Rebecca M says dozing off a little we'll have to catch this later um, which is absolutely fine if you are tired you should have a sleep or just leave this on fall asleep to what I'm hoping is going to be quite a nice video um, lots of people just chatting with each other which is really nice um, it's nice that it's uh, people have, have jumped over from from Luke's uh, chat who are very evidently lots of people um, who are friends in there and who are having a good old um, a good old natter which is lovely um, okay uh, clarity I rarely use all that much in landscapes because it starts to go very very crunchy and weird once you start to uh, move that slider up sometimes it can be good um, in some images I, I use it quite a lot in car photography because things like supercars need that drama that pop that punch that you get from upping the clarity slider texture I definitely don't touch you put that up and things go very very weird I don't like it at all but the dehaze can actually work quite well but again you need to be sort of subtle with it if we start taking this up too much it goes very contrasty uh, too dark the colors become too saturated but I do like a little bit so I'm gonna leave it somewhere about plus nine which I think already looks a little bit nicer but what I haven't touched yet is the white balance and having a look at this straight out of camera I actually think this is pretty good um, let's just see what it does with auto and actually I think that looks better it's warmed it up slightly it's moved the tint across away from those greens if we just turn that off and on I think that's done a really good job I'm actually happy with leaving that exactly as it is it looks a little bit more like uh, sort of the evening light and actually this was taken at yeah about half past two in the afternoon so we're not quite in the evening light but it's it just looks a little bit warmer 
which I think is nice. Um, okay, uh, what I'm going to do is start using a graduated filter. Now, for me, using selective edits like graduated filters, the radial filter, and just the adjustment brush is one of the best ways to edit your photos because what it does is it allows you to make edits in very specific areas. So instead of just applying uh, contrast to everywhere in the image, you can just put it in certain places. It gives you a lot more control and it means that you can uh, fine tune your images in exactly the way you want rather than just whacking the contrast up across the board. So it's a really good way of working. So what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to bring in a dark uh, graduated filter with that exposure down at um, about minus one or 0 0.99 as it currently is and I'm going to bring that up here in the bottom and I'm probably going to reduce it down a little bit more the reason being is because the main focus of this scene is very much these rocks the mountains it's very much the middle of the frame but the uh, the bottom where these ferns and this grass are are already quite bright so by darkening that down it just sort of draws the eye away from that area because naturally your eye in an image will be drawn to the brightest point it's drawn to lighter areas so by darkening the areas that you don't want people to look at it forces their eye towards the areas that you do want them to look at so it's a good way of a good little trick to, to learn now I'm going to do another one of these. This time it's going on the sky. and I don't want to darken it down this much, so we're going to brighten that back up. Um, we're going to darken it a little bit, but we're also going to increase the contrast. And this is when we're going to add a bit of clarity. The reason is this is going to carve out the details on those clouds. And if you look, as I start to bring that clarity right up, we're not going to go up to plus 100. That's a bit much. But you see the difference. Those clouds suddenly are sculpted. They, they look like these real three-dimensional objects in the sky rather than before it was sort of this hazy mess this is a really nice way of, of getting those skies to look a lot more moody we can do the same by adding a little bit of a dehaze too and again we don't want to go overboard with this because the more we do it gets darker and darker and looks weird and too over processed it's not good at all so very very subtle approach with the dehaze somewhere around plus 11 if we just turn that off and back on we can see it's made a real big difference to that sky if anything I think I might have got um, gone a little bit too far with that so what I'm going to do is just drag this down but then move it back up so I'm just feathering the effect out a little bit more which is hopefully it's going to make it a bit more natural and blend uh, with the with the picture um, in a slightly better way so I think that's looking pretty nice but we're going to do another local adjustment this time just the adjust adjustment brush reset that exposure just by clicking on the word exposure and i'm going to bring it up to say plus so let's go quite high for now we're going to go basically plus a whole stop of exposure but i'm going to bring the flow down now what this means is it's set to 10 and that means that with each stroke of the brush it's only going to apply 10 percent of the effect that allows you basically to paint in more and more of the effect which allows you to blend it very very naturally so for on this instance what i want to do is paint across these cliffs i'm going to reduce my brush size by uh, using my scroll wheel on my mouse um, my feather is at what is at 100 that just softens the outside of that brush and again that helps it blend a lot more and by feathering and by using a low flow you can blend in this effect in a very natural way just like this painting in this light and then if we just hover over this we can see what we painted in and that little bit of red that red line we can see going across is where the effect is being applied so we're going to keep on going painting a little bit more of this light and i think that's about all i want to do a little bit up here maybe and a little bit on these rocks there this is what I would call the Bob Ross approach to photo editing um, but at this point now we've got that mask in place I am going to up the whites a little bit and as you can see because we've used that low flow and that soft edge even though I'm moving this white slider up a lot it's not obvious what's going on it's very it's still quite subtle so we can bring that up a bit I even bring those highlights up and maybe add a little bit of clarity at this point just to help sculpt those rocks 
but because it's specifically on the rocks only you can't really tell it's just carving out the details there but as you saw before if we apply clarity to the whole picture it looks very weird so this is a nice way of, of um, focusing that adjustment uh, my phone keeps going off so I'm going to just put it over there where it is uh, out of reach and also put it on silent that'll be helpful um, Danny McNamara says that the clouds look more threatening they do and that's one of the the reasons why I love using this particularly um, when I'm doing any landscapes where there is bad weather and for me bad weather in, in photography is my absolute favorite I don't like empty blue skies most landscape photographers don't like empty blue skies what's great is when you get amazing cloud detail and I love stormy days I love moody clouds and using techniques like this where you just darken a little bit the clouds add that contrast add that clarity you can really make them look even more epic and menacing and that looks really cool so where were we okay let's have a quick look at before and after before and after we can see we've got a little bit more light now casting on uh, these rocks we've got our attention drawn to the middle of the frame and I think we're looking good so I don't want to do loads to these shots because I think the beauty of going to places like Mull is that there's so much amazing natural scenes that that you can find that I don't want to mess those up too much I don't want to go nuts with the vibrance and the, and the saturation I'm going to do a little bit with that um, but I don't want to do weird wacky edits I don't want to apply too many presets that completely shift everything um, in the scene in, in, in a weird way because you don't need to these are places that are so beautiful um, that they just don't really need that kind of work um, one thing I am going to do is have a little play with the HSL uh, tab that stands for hue saturation luminance and that gives you control over the hue saturation luminance of each color individually that's really really powerful for kind of slightly um, uh, shifting the color tones in an image for brightening up certain colors um, and for selectively improving saturation so in this instance I uh, I really like the um, sort of the warmer tones but I think we can do more with those so I want to grab the yellow first of all let's see what this does by bringing this down more into the oranges which I think is already looking quite nice if we bring it all the way everything goes a sort of brown it's all the same color so it doesn't really work very well so again subtle shift or maybe actually pushing it more to the right and going a bit more vibrant green what do we think personally for me like I like the autumnal tones that you get from going a bit more into the orange and maybe pushing the green further up into the emerald green so you get a little bit of both um, that's probably what I would do out of choice but let's go the other way and bring those greens down and actually move that yellow up so now what we've got is a vibrant uh, more vibrant green maybe actually pull that green down the yellow goes up a little bit more into those greens and then let's pull this orange down because this orange tone is almost entirely in the rocks and you'll see if I just pull this all the way down those rocks go pink we don't want that but as you can see you can tell clearly that those rocks are almost entirely uh, based in the orange color channel which makes it easy for us to control what they look like so I want to pull it down a little bit because I want to separate uh, that color from the rest of the yellowy green that's around it uh, which I think looks quite nice like that and then in the luminance I'm going to brighten up the orange channel as well which again is just helping brighten up those rocks helps them stand out from their environment makes it look a little bit more like they've got um, uh, sun hitting them which I think looks really nice but now I have brightened them don't like what I've done with that color tone so I'm going to go back and bring it back a little bit towards there and you know what we're going to bring those yellows back down bring those greens back up I think I prefer it like this no I don't this is the great thing there's no right or wrong way and even I can't decide how I want to edit my own photo so um, so there we go um, having a uh, look through the comments sorry I, I can't talk and read at the same time um, I don't know how Luke does it he can seem to 
uh, comment while also deciding on which comments to read. Uh, Shy Violet says, it looks much more alive, the sky, which I um, agree. Thank you. Um, Scuttlebutt101, great username, says, not being very active in the chat, but just wanted to say that I'm glad that Luke sent me here. I need these kinds of chill streams right now, and I get to learn things. Well, Scuttlebutt, thank you for joining me. Thank you again, Luke, for sending uh, your lovely uh, viewers over here. It's much appreciated. And um, yeah, I'm hoping that maybe people will enjoy the stream, even if they're not um, super into their photography. Um, and uh, if you are just sort of vaguely into your photography, then hopefully you can learn a few tricks for, um, uh, yeah, shaping up your photos a little bit and maybe having a go through your gallery and see what other shots you can get. Um, right, next up, we're going to go into split toning because I think that I want to add a little bit of blue into these shadows. Something like that. And in the highlights, a little bit of warmth with those oranges. If we just turn that off, and on. Now to me that's quite a subtle shift so I'm not even sure you're necessarily going to be able to see that once it's gone through YouTube's uh, compression but so I'm going to bump it up a little bit just to kind of make it a bit more obvious but I like what that's doing. Um, I think maybe I'm going to bring these the shadows back down or I'm going to change the hue of the blue a little bit slightly more into the the cyan rather than towards the magenta and I think that's really nice. Overall, I don't think there is a lot more that I want to do with this shot. It's quite a simple scene already. I don't think it's one that requires a heavy hand in the processing. So I think at that point, particularly given that I've spent the best part of 20 minutes on it, I'm going to call this one done. No, I'm not. I'm going to add one more thing. And I'm going to, again, with the exposure up, the whites up, a little bit of clarity, using the brush, I want to just try painting in a little extra light on this mountain. But what I'm doing is painting it over where there already is some light. I'm not adding in new light. So before there was, you might just be able to see in the before, there is this sort of ever so slight streak of light going across this mountain. Um, and there is down here as well. And all I want to do is kind of emphasize that just a little bit. And down here, and kind of anywhere where the light is already hitting that is too much so we're going to bring it back down something like that it's very very small amount to me it just it just stops those mountains from just fading into just gray nothingness and helps them feel like they're part of the scene which um maybe i'm overthinking it but it works for me i like it let's consider that shot done for now so i'm going to go back out and let's have a look at um, this one. This was from a nice beach I found again on Mull. This is a beach which is beautiful and we were the only people on it and it was just absolutely fantastic. So uh, yeah, lovely, lovely scene. So let's go over into our develop tab and instantly we can see this is too dark. So it needs brightening up quite a lot. That exposure is gonna go up quite a long way we're also going to the shadows up there's a lot of shadow detail that we're losing out on at the moment and to counter some of that exposure we're going to bring those highlights back down because there's a lot of highlight detail in the sand in the rocks and of course in the sky we don't want that to be blown out um, so I think already it's looking like a much better picture there's our before and there's our after and suddenly we've got this beautiful white sand beach we've got the colors in the uh, beautiful blue colors in the water it was amazing. Um, I had a little paddle. I was debating going for a swim, but I went in and just paddled and it was so cold. My feet hurt, like they were genuinely painful because of how cold it was. Um, so I didn't go for a swim. Other people who were with me did and uh, called me a coward for not going in. And I agree completely with them. Uh, the crop tool I've got up though. Now, for me, this shot, I didn't take it with the idea of it being a square image, but in the edit now, I can see that the all the actual interesting parts of this scene are in the middle of the frame. It's the beach, it's the rocks, it's this bit of grass down here, but we've got empty sky at the top and basically redundant grass in the bottom of the frame, 
We don't need that. That isn't adding to the image. If anything, it's spoiling it because it doesn't look like a very focused image. It looks like a snapshot. So just by doing the simple trick of selecting a better crop, moving that into place and, uh, and adjusting accordingly is a great way of making your shots look a bit more professional because they look more um, purposeful rather than it just being a literal just holding a camera up and snapping away this now looks like some thought has gone into the composition if we bring that uh, that crop overlay back up again rule of thirds uh, I'm not saying that you should apply rule of thirds like a religion it's just a guide but this does flow very very nicely with that rule of thirds we've got this rock here this right falling right on this um this cross in the rule of thirds this top line of the of the water flows along this line this line of the beach sort of follows this line the rock is right here it all lines up very very nicely so compositionally this shot this shot is um is looking pretty good um but again we've got this this sort of empty grass down here and kind of like we had in the shot before i don't want the eye to be drawn to this i want the eye to be immediately drawn to that amazing beach to that white sand to that blue water so i'm going to bring in um another uh, graduated filter i'm going to bring that exposure down and i'm just going to pull it up from the bottom just like that and that is just darkening down maybe that's a little bit much again so let's just bring that up and then drag this arm down something like this just to help feather out that effect a little bit more so if we hover our mouse over it we can see where is red is where it's being applied um, into not being applied at all so you can see the way that that red fades out and as it fades out the strength of the effect is also fading out so which is exactly what we want we don't want it to look like a harsh black line we want it to look like it's naturally blending in with the environment ah, people in the comments um uh <laughs> shy violet says hey let them get frostbite they say coward i say smart <laughs> and katie collins says that water looks so inviting though it does look so inviting um yeah i imagine you would want to go and have a lovely swim in this um, I'm going to add another graduated filter now this time in from the top because again I just want to take control a little bit of that sky but I don't want to do it much because if you just go too dark then you just got this black darkness and it's not good it is a lovely bright blue sky we want to keep it as such but it's slightly overpoweringly bright so just a little touch to bring this down and that's all I'm going to do to that there are no clouds to make more dramatic so I'm not adding in clarity and contrast if we add clarity to empty blue sky basically nothing happens no point whichever way you do it there is a slight shift but it's not really doing anything at all so we don't need to touch that the only thing that you can really adjust is that exposure but there is more we can do to the sky with some other tools so this is pretty much all i want to do with the exposure i think our highlights are nicely balanced our shadows have been brought up so we've got nice detail on the rocks down here and yet we've still got um, we've got no blown out highlights on this sand um, I think looks good it actually looks looks like it might be a little blurry maybe not no I just think it is, hasn't isn't loading quite as it should in here I'll tell you what I have got though I have got chromatic aberration and which again maybe in YouTube you can't see but there is this little line of of like light greeny blue haze or some kind that's going around this uh this top edge of this hill and i think that's probably why we're losing some of the, the clarity because there is i can see the same thing on some of these rocks so let's go down to our lens corrections enable chromatic sorry remove chromatic aberration and that will get rid of that line it hasn't sharpened anything up at all but it won't it won't really do that that's just going to make things a little bit neater we can click enable profile corrections but um yeah sometimes i don't click this you know i think the default is that you should always correct for any kind of distortion from your lens but sometimes i actually quite like it certainly if i'm shooting cars you kind of want that um almost like wide angle dramatic effect 
so I don't correct for it in fact I I want it um, so I'm going to uh, go back up from this because we've sort of done what we want with this shot and I'm going to go straight to the HSL tab so with this one I definitely want to bring those greens back into the uh, yellowy autumnal tones I think this is going to look um, much nicer because I want this to be a um, like a warm inviting scene so I don't want these vibrant greens I want moodier not moodier just warmer tones lovely oranges richness and I don't quite know what words I'm trying to find here but I'm definitely trying to find some words um, obviously if you go too far we start things start looking weird again and we start getting too much um, uh, sort of orangey pink tones which is a certain look and this already is kind of a popular look that you'll find on Instagram the whole teal and orange you know you've got two colors that are predominantly seen in an image and it is orange and it is light blue basically and um, I don't like it and I, it doesn't look natural to me so again it's very much about that subtle approach but what I really want to do so if I just reset that yellow if we have a look at the at the beach down here now we've gone back to normal it looks a little green to me rather than white or rather than um, the, the color of, of, of sand it, it looks it look a little bit off and I think one of the reasons is probably that um, our tint in our white balance is a little off so I can just increase that maybe increase the warmth for just a touch um, I think something like that but it doesn't look quite right to me so what I'm gonna do is rather than just using the yellow um, hue tab is I'm going to use this little tool here and what this lets you do is grab the tool and then place it over the color that you want to change so in this case I'm literally just dropping it over the top of the sand and then I drag and if we take a look at the sliders in the HSL tab you we can see straight away that it is affecting the colors that are in the area that I clicked on in this case it's the beach which is made up of evidently yellow mostly and also orange so as I move these up and down it's affecting those colors which is great it makes it very easy to do so I can bring those down and now suddenly we've got a proper more rich tone on those um, on that sand rather than it being a bit washed out and green but that is as far as I want to go uh, with those colors I don't think it needs anymore if we just turn that off and back on that sand has gone from a sickly green color into a much more inviting uh, yellow and orange tone which I think looks really really good um, so what about this green though because I've toned it down I think a little bit too much because what's happened is that all the tones now in the grass down here have all merged into basically a yellowy orange and that's not great because it makes them all blend into one and I think it'd be nice to have a little bit of separation so bringing these greens actually back up suddenly we have got more of a green tone in here a little bit more on the tops of these um, on tops of these rocks and the yellow and orange is now specifically more around the um, around the sand which is great but let's address the blues so this sky obviously it's a very very deep blue but it already looks like there's a little bit too much magenta in there it's it's quite a a bluey purple rather than bluey green and I want to kind of shift it the other way not too much because again as soon as you do that it starts going too green too fake too Instagram filter um, but that way goes to purple so I think something around and I always just eyeball this I don't try and color match or do anything like that it's just when it looks right when it looks good to my eye and I think minus 15 is that point uh, maybe a little bit less I think that is a good point uh, to me I might also just bring the saturation down on the blue because it's a touch overpowering something like that back into the hue and I want to do a little bit with this here because I think we've lost a bit of color this was quite a vibrant uh, aqua and now it is looking a little bit something else okay so it's the greens there's, there's green in there 
and I don't want to, so if we just pull down only the green pay attention to this patch in the water up here it goes yellow I definitely don't want that in our sea we want our greens to stay green so I'm going to keep my greens actually push them up a little bit plus 10 that's again just helping them look a little bit more vibrant in that grass down here but it's also stopping our sea looking too yellowy but then we grab the aqua and let's try going this way let's try going that way this way that way this way that way I think going to the left works quite well for it it pushes it more towards that um, very sort of crystal like uh, uh, sort of Bahamas beach color I think which um, which to me looks really really nice and I think that's looking as a shot a lot better than than where we were um, let's have a look before too dark too plain straight out of camera now we've got a lot more going on but it's still very much in keeping with the, how this scene actually looked we haven't gone too wild and overboard um, let's before we move on to anything else let's have a little play around with this whites add a little bit more pop and contrast with that maybe even actually a bit more contrast itself this is a nice contrasty scene the more contrast we have basically the more we're going to sculpt out some of the detail on these rocks here um, and again if we wanted we could maybe bring in um, a brush or even a, um, a radial filter and maybe we could just add a bit of extra contrast there I don't think that's really what we want which way is that doing it we went to that way we can add a bit of contrast nope invert there we go specifically on those rocks plus 16 maybe up the shadows but also up the clarity a little touch let's bring that in yeah again it's subtle maybe you couldn't tell but works for me i quite like it Growly says in the chat the aqua definitely had an effect on how clean slash dirty the water looked. Yeah, I think it really, um, I think it really did. I think it looks, um, I think it looks good now. Um, but I do want to just try, and I didn't do this when I did these edits, um, uh, when I edited these for my video. But I do want to try upping the exposure, upping the contrast, upping the clarity a little bit, and the saturation, and maybe dropping the temperature. And I'm going to also oh, let's up that flow a little bit and I'm going to paint over the C just specifically to kind of emphasize that a little bit more and help it pop out in a way that I was kind of struggling to get it to with just global edits this might be a little much we'll see how it goes let's bring those highlights down because they're a little bit a little bit much the whites up we could even let's just have a play around with this hue let's see where we can get this because if we go this way it goes weirdly green this way it's going to go weirdly purple just as we found with the other side so what we could do let's push it just a little bit to minus 1.6 i think our saturation might be a tad high so we can bring that back down but if i just turn that off and on like that I don't necessarily think you would look at this scene right here and go oh yeah you've messed around with the sea too much that looks that looks awful I think it's still subtle enough that it's believable but it just helps make it look like it's sparkling under that beautiful Sun whereas without it a little bit drab and let me tell you that sea was anything but drab so I, I really feel that by putting that in it's it's getting the shot back to how it really looked on the day back to how it was because I also think I had a polarizer on my camera and polarizers basically cancel out a lot of reflections particularly reflections on water so I think that maybe what's happened is that my polarizer has actually made the sea look more drab because it doesn't have that like that light sparkling off it in quite the same way so I think by putting that in it's just livening things up a little bit and I think it looks a lot better for it let me know what you think in the in the comments if you think that um, has gone too far uh, maybe you're right but um, I think for now I'm gonna call this shot 
done. Let's turn things off. That's what we started with. Dark, dingy, green looking sand. And we brought it to this, which I think as a, as a holiday snap, if nothing else, is pretty nice. So, Shy Violet says, the seawater near LA looks like dirt. I'm very jealous of this water. To be fair, I think everyone is probably jealous of this water because this is beautiful bay water on this relatively remote little island. Most seawater does not look anything like this. The coast around Edinburgh is lovely, but the water just looks like any coastal water, which is basically brown. Um, whereas this, yeah, it's crystal clear. It's gorgeous. It is bloody cold. Um, even though it was uh, midsummer when I was there and very nice to kind of lay out and enjoy the sun, but getting in that water, yeah, you'd need a decent wetsuit, I think, to really enjoy it and spend all day. Maybe not. I'm going to move on to this shot. Now, this is really cool. This is a cave on an even more remote island that I had to get a small boat out to on the island of Staffa. This is called Fingal's Cave. As you can see, it's made up of these amazing hexagonal... Um, is that blurry? No, it just hasn't loaded properly. Oh, I don't know what's happened. Let's just... Okay, I've got the same problem before. Before I start talking about this, let's enable profile corrections, remove chromatic aberration, and straight away, let's turn that chromatic aberration off, and we can see, look at this, this color line here. Keep your eye on it. Turn it on. It goes... <gasps> like magic it's brilliant yeah this is Fingal's cave and basically it's made up of these hexagonal columns these naturally occurring hexagonal columns all over the island it looks absolutely incredible you might recognize these if you're familiar with the giant's causeway in northern ireland now uh, it's believed that Fingal's cave and giant's causeway are geologically linked and in uh, the mythology uh, i was going to say north mythology i don't think it's norse but celtic mythology presumably uh, they are actually giants who I think fought each other, maybe if I'm remembering that correctly. Um, but this is a, a big cave that you can walk into and get this shot. So it's really, really cool. Uh, Nate in the comments says, I think Taylor Swift would like to write a song about that place. Um, I reckon you are um, right. I reckon Taylor Swift would love to write some. Actually, Taylor Swift would love to write a song um, about my mug. Maybe she'd call it Cardigan. Um, it's a good idea. Maybe Taylor Swift should go and do that. So we're starting off. My teeth has gone cold by this point. Starting off by bringing down those highlights. So let's just go before, undo that. We can see straight away. Um, uh, we've got very bright highlights coming from, obviously, outside the cave. Outside, beautiful blue sky, sunny day. Inside the cave, darkness. Which means, of course, we need to do some balancing out of those tones. So, yes, straight away we'll bring down those highlights. Not quite to the bottom because we let then start to kind of lose um, some of the contrast on the rocks, which is a bit of a shame. So I'm going to keep it at about minus 80-ish, somewhere around there. And let's bring up the shadows a bit. But then I'm also going to, I say a bit, that's a lot, plus 65. Let's bring it down to plus 50, actually ish and then i'm going to bring in a radial filter i'm going to put it right here basically so it's mostly targeting the darkest part of the cave i'm going to up that exposure up those shadows and immediately we can see now that we can get more detail inside that cave we can see those rocks right at the back but we haven't just increased the shadows on all of those rocks we haven't lost shadow detail here we've selectively brought it in where we needed it which is just what we need um, if we have a look at where that mask is applying it's around here so we could maybe even feather it off even more which is going to make it apply less around here and focus it very much in the middle which i think actually looks even better if we just turn that off and on it's just adding a bit more light in the back filling in some of those details so that it doesn't just fall completely too black inside that cave which um i don't want i like to be able to see those details i think it's good it's sort of telling the story of this whole cave arguably maybe if it did fall completely too black let's just go all the way down 
maybe now it's even more mysterious because you don't know how far the cave goes and you don't know Ooh, that's i mean now i said that i kind of like that but it looks too fake because it's too dark so no we're going to stick with brighter and seeing more of the cave let me know what you think if you think actually it looks better the other way but to me this is kind of where i want to go but we've still got too much light down here on this left hand side and as i was saying before your eye is naturally drawn to the brighter parts of the scene but in this case your eye is going to be drawn to this bottom left hand corner to these rocks here because they are getting the most light definitely don't want that to be the case i want the eye on basically this middle section around here where all the detail on those rocks is where you see those hexagonal shapes nate says i prefer the black well nate uh, Nate is my brother, uh, who is an excellent drummer. And actually, if you go, his uh, he's started his own YouTube channel, Nate Langson Drums. Uh, he is a phenomenal drummer. And if you're interested in uh, drumming, if you're interested in metal, um, as both Nate and I are, go and take a look at his channel because he's got a digital drum kit. But unlike anyone you'll see anywhere else, because he's basically bought multiple very high-end digital drum kits and combined them into one absolute behemoth of a drum kit and he does these amazing playthroughs um, um of really really great bands so go and take a look at his channel he's in the comments it's nate langson drums langson is spelled exactly funnily enough like it is in my name so go and have a look go and go and check him out he will appreciate that he's just started doing it he's very very talented um Cool, so yeah, we're bringing down this exposure here. Again, don't wanna to go too far, just a bit. So we just go before and after. Look how bright and overpowering this was down here in this bottom left. Um, it, it draws the eye, like it's all, your eye doesn't know where to go and so it goes to the brightest part and it's all down there, which is not where we wanted to go now. It's a balanced image. It's very flat, but it's a good place to start kind of working from. So what I want to do as well is a radial filter. This one, a much bigger one, pretty much in the middle of the scene. I'm just going to up that exposure. Also going to slightly up the clarity, reduce the shadows a little bit, maybe up those whites. So now the brighter part of the scene is the middle, kind of as though the sun is is being thrown in from outside and it's casting across the middle of that wall before it wasn't before the light was very much on the left now we've drawn it more into the cave where all those amazing looking columns are so it's just about controlling that light and sometimes you can't do that um i had all of maybe a minute at most inside this uh this cave because it's pretty much only one person can go in at a time particularly at the moment because of, of covid social distancing meant that we couldn't have crowds of people trying to get photos i had to go in take some photos then let other people um come on in so uh ground says link as to nate's channel uh i can't right now um but nate has commented straight afterwards um, Ian 9 out of 10 says, Andy, why is the chromatic aberration a problem on the original photo? Is it the lens? Are some lenses worse for it? Ian, yes, that is exactly uh, what it is. It is the lens, and particularly with wide-angle lenses, if we just have a quick look at the, at the before, we can see that it's worse on the outside, and in fact, you can see that there is distortion on the outside of the lens because it's wide-angle and it's sort of the image bows out um, at the edges. We can see that not only is the image skewed, but that this sort of greenish blue line on the rocks, on the detail, um, is much stronger here than it is on, say, the middle. In fact, there isn't any in the middle to correct. It's on the outside where that distortion happens. I don't know the science of it, but it's, it's always um, areas of contrast. So you can see between the light side of the rock here and the dark side, that's where it happens. Um, so yeah, it's all down to the lens. Cheaper lenses get a lot more. This is taken on a Canon L series wide angle lens. It is a very good lens, but even so we still get this, but it's an easy fix once we've done our adjustments. Yes, there is still a bit of um, distortion at the end, but that chromatic aberration is gone. Um, it looks a lot better. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, and indeed, Nate says it tends to be the lens. It's because of the light is split into component colors through the lens elements. So there you go. 
Uh, where were we? Yes, we were editing photos. I remember. Let's up those whites. Get a bit more pop back into this scene because it is flat. So let's add some whites in there. Looking better already. Um, I'm going to start speeding up because I'm noticing that I've been going for almost an hour and I've only done three pictures. Um, and I had 10 to go through. I'm not going to go through all 10. I never intended to, but I wanted to have some backups just in case. Um, I'm going to bring in a adjustment brush, brighten that up and paint in a bit of light on this uh, C down here. Now, this is actually a very long exposure photo. Well, I say very long. It's 1.3 seconds. My hope was that I was going to get a rougher C where the water comes crashing into this into this cave splashing up on the cave wall so i wanted to get this great motion kind of like let's just very quickly refer to this shot so this shot is only half a second but we get because it was a very rough watery day even though it was actually the same day um we get this motion from the water we get this uh, this great texture on these waves as they sort of crash over these rocks which looks really really nice and ethereal so imagine that sort of effect inside uh, inside here would have looked awesome but the water was still and doing nothing at all so this would have looked exactly the same had i've taken it at 1.3 seconds or if i'd have taken it at a thousandth of a second i mean i actually took it at 1.3 seconds as well because it was so dark inside that i needed to use a long exposure to capture enough light but um uh oh okay this is interesting um so completely off topic um gentle gentle mandrill in the comments who i know that is a is a regular on the outside xbox and outside extra uh channels and um, i often hear their username read out and i assumed that they were always getting it wrong because i assumed it was gentleman drill because that's sort of a bit sinister a drill is sometimes a dangerous thing maybe even a weapon so the gentleman drill it's kind of cool but no he's actually they are just uh, clarifying that no, it's it's gentle mandrill. Um, so they were right all along, and I was wrong. And I don't ac acknowledge that I'm wrong that often, so I'm going to have to treat myself with a twirl. But it's a special edition orange twirl. Oh, I love orange chocolate so much. And these are brilliant. Um, let's carry on while I'm also eating chocolate. I forgot to ask how um, my audio levels are sounding and how everything's looking, but my assumption is that you'd have said something after an hour, so I assume I'm probably fine. I am going to add the slightest touch of clarity because I think it is going to really help the detail of these rocks pop out, but it has to be subtle because look what happens if I add 100. Uh, everything goes awful and crunchy and nasty it's not good but a bit maybe plus around 10 is going to be enough just to make it um just to add that extra little bit of pop uh, well a little bit of clarity as its name suggests on the details on the on these rocks which i think looks really really nice okay let's um do some playing around with some of these uh these colors because i definitely think that we can neaten things up a little bit we've got some nice orange tones on here which has sort of been lost so i'm going to pull these oranges down oh are they actually in the reds yeah in the back they are actually in the red channel because if you see as i pull this up and down that back wall changes but they were quite vibrantly pink so i think bringing that red down and, and trying to bring back some of that color looks um, looks quite nice and doing the same with the oranges brings back some of that kind of pink issue if you google other pictures of this some of them are super vivid pink they didn't look super vivid to me so i don't want to go overboard and fake that vivid uh, that vivid tone but i want to kind of bring it back uh just a little bit um now there's this sort of mossy green on the rock and i i think i like it staying staying green if we go yellow everything looks a little bit sickly and brown so i think keeping it around there looks good the yellows however can come down not too much and again 
this is all about just having a go on each slider, seeing what it does, and it's entirely up to you. Like, I'm not referring to any image. I'm not trying to be super accurate. If this was like a commercial product photo and you're taking a, a photo of, say, an orange twirl, you'd want this purple to be exactly the purple it is and this orange to be exactly the orange. But with this, it's art and it's subjective and you can make the image your own however you want that to be. So for me, this is how I want it to look. It's very much for natural tones, but um, trying to capture it a little bit more how I really saw that scene. And to me, this is already looking better. This, uh, this sort of ready pink down here in the water is vibrant. It's standing out more. It's also separating the colors from from the sort of pinky white mossy lichen down here and the green on top. If we look before, those colors all kind of blend into one tone on that rock. Now there is separation between the upper and the lower levels. Uh, blue, what's blue doing? I think basically sod all. So that can stay where it is, but I think there's going to be aqua in this water down here, and indeed there is. Let's push that. In the middle, it's a bit greeny and, I don't know, it doesn't look particularly inviting to me. So I'm actually going to push it the other way, further into the blues. Um, in fact, almost all the way into the blues. I think that looks better. We could even play with the luminance. Oh no, wait, not the blues. Aqua, there we go. I might bring it down, because I don't quite like this patch. And I think bring it down looks good. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm also trying to keep my eye on the comments as well. Uh, Shabbat says, this cave is where someone would hide their treasure. I'm absolutely sure that uh, treasure has been hidden uh, in similar caves exactly like this. Um, I might send this image to the... Uh, Ox Venturers Guild and they can use it as a background when they're next doing some kind of uh, uh, cave delve as they are known to do. Uh, cool, where else were we going to? With Illuminance, let's bring those yellows down, the oranges up just a touch and that red right in the back we're going to bring up a little bit as well. I don't think we've got anything really going on in the purples or the magentas. So uh, saturation I do want to boost quite a bit across the board a little bit on those greens the yellows where are we going with the yellows yeah I think let's let's take that up the oranges again yeah I think most things are looking pretty good with the with the broad surface. it's a vibrant scene there are so many different colors now down here we've got the blues then we go into the pinks then we go into those greens and then it blends up into I mean that's sort of no color but it's almost got a bluey tinge to it I feel and then we've got like the yellows in the in the in the roof of the cave so we've got so many different colors going on all in one scene and we haven't added those colors we just slightly emphasize them by just ever so slightly up in the saturation I'm going to go into the top though and I'm going to bring down the vibrance minus 25 and I'm going to see what it looks like to boost the saturation this is a technique I use often in my shots and particularly in my landscapes in uh, using the vibrance and saturation in opposites so bringing that vibrance down by a certain amount and then upping the saturation and I don't really know why because I don't necessarily know exactly how vibrance and saturation handle colors differently but for some reason they do and often that really works excuse me burping all over the place this is absolutely appalling behavior in a live stream but I don't know what to do about it other than dying I suppose that's the only way to stop burping um, so yeah play around with those see what they do if you haven't tried using those in opposite ways before then um, do it the other way around uh, we could even have a look the other way around let's see what it does let's bring this let's bring saturation down to 40 and bring the vibrance up maybe even push the vibrance up a bit further this time let's go to 60 and that saturation down. You know what? I think that might look even better. There's a lot of color to it, but it's good because it's a colorful cave. There is color in there. So this is not, I don't think this is going too far unless it is, of course, going too far. I'm indecisive. Okay, let's have a look. 
this is our before and i think there is a dramatic change in this one we've got dark inside the cave we've got a lot of lost detail in those shadows we've got too bright out here we've gone from uh, plain drab colors and then now we've gone to this we've got better tones we've got detail on those pillars we've got a balanced tonal range across the board um, and we've got much more vibrant colors without going overboard i'm actually really pleased with this i think this is i think this has come out really nicely i actually prefer this edit to the one i had already done which i don't know where it is but it's again in that mole video take a look at my mole video i would love you all to go and take a look at my mole video um so i think that is done again before after before after notice particularly in the back of the cave we've brought out so much more detail um i think it was nate actually that said um he liked the cave in the back to be darker so let's just now we've made all those other changes let's go back to that filter and bring it down again yeah i mean i'm take vote in the comments i very much would be interested to know what the general consensus is on this like what do we prefer for me i prefer to see more of what's going on in that cave i like to know what's i think it's interesting to to see this back wall you get to see that this extends far in that doesn't mean that that's the end of the cave it could easily keep on going um but i do get that there is a lot of mystery around the darkness nate says uh i still like the dark anders danielson says too dark yeah i think i'm with you anders sorry nate i like maybe maybe it's a happy medium maybe i'll just i won't bring up the exposure i'll just bring up a bit of those shadows and we'll leave it at that so sort of in between not quite as bright as before um yeah shy violet says i prefer something in between kurt conway says dark uh secret agent sam i like the lighter one um and the archer i like the dark but not that dark gentle mandrill i prefer the lighter one okay well we've gone we've gone happy medium then in this case because it does seem to be actually fairly evenly split so hopefully this way we can make everyone happy which obviously we can never do in photography no one is ever happy with everything but that is it for this shot so let's move on uh, let's move on to one more um let's do let's do this one because i think i'm going to do two more and um uh, and i do like this one so this is obviously vertical composition and i really liked this scene um i actually camped about here this edge of this lake kind of goes around here and i was um, set up in my uh, in my car with a rooftop tent box overlooking this scene it was bloody gorgeous again check out my video and you'll see all of that and it's absolutely an amazing scene but what i what i did is when this this the light started to kind of come across these mountains in the way that you can see we've got direction to the light i had a walk around try to find ways of making a good uh, composition and these like clumps of grass caught my eye i thought this is going to make a really nice bit of foreground interest so it's not just a picture of a nice scene i've actively tried to put some foreground and background interest in there we've got nice cloud detail so overall hopefully it makes for a slightly uh, nicer composition but we can neaten that composition up by first of all straightening the shot let's actually go through this one a bit quicker because i've been taking a lot of time over the other ones up the exposure it is pretty dark uh bring down a graduated filter on that sky because we want to do some cool stuff when i talked about bringing out cloud detail on the other one well we're going to do it and then some on this one up that contrast up that clarity look how much that cloud really pops now it looks awesome maybe that's a bit much bring that contrast back in clarity can stay up though because that's how you really get that detail carved out off and on yeah looks cool too dark though sorry again indecisive right now we're going to go with a brush uh exposure up highlights down whites up and i'm going to paint it in on these 
balls of grass uh, down here because I want those to pop out of the scene they are in shadow I want them to be very much uh, an active part of the scene rather than looking like something I've accidentally kept in frame and we're going to do that by brightening them up and making them look a bit more visible let's bring those highlights down touch of clarity just a touch just a plus 11 okay it's looking good um our white balance is a little bit off i feel it's a little bit green so let's take that tint up already looking a lot better this has made a huge difference and we can bring the temperature up a little bit as well because we've got evening light when was this taken quarter past five in the evening so uh yeah this is good uh before and after look how much different we're, we're making we've got evening warm tones coming in with these grasses in the foreground are much more visible uh the sky is looking better yeah i'm happy i'm happy with this um and we haven't even touched the rest of our um exposure side let's bring that highlight down a little bit just taking the edge off those clouds our shadows up down up down shape them all around up a little bit i think whites again also up black levels can go down just a tiny amount again no right or wrong way i mean there is a right or wrong way that's the wrong way that's also the wrong way but you know <laughs> okay d haze what's that doing mm, nothing too good so just a little bit and then let's go down in fact you know what what we'll do here um i'm going to talk a little bit about using none of those were words i'm going to talk a little bit about using presets because i do love using presets and even as a professional photographer they are incredibly helpful and i would encourage anyone who's using lightroom and similar programs that have presets to experiment with them they are great ways of finding new looks that you want to experiment with I've said this a lot in my videos, but the way to use presets is to not just find a preset of a photographer you love. Maybe it's, I don't know, Pete McKinnon. You've downloaded his latest preset pack and it's all like cinematic and cool in that way he does well. And don't just one click apply a preset because all you're gonna do is, is try and like get your shots to look like his and maybe they will but then they just look like someone else's you need to make them your own so the thing to do is to go through your presets and use them as more like inspiration uh, right now i'm just mousing over them being like okay what could i do with any of these like what are they doing some of them are cooling the shot down some of them are warming them up slightly some of them are making them black and white so you know i'm not entirely sure actually looking at these whether i want to apply any of these maybe we can keep on going there's loads of them i use the uh, visco preset pack same as the visco app they're very like filmic looks um i like them a lot actually this this k3 is a bit much i kind of like what it's doing to the colors but my problem with working with uh, presets in, as well in lightroom is that you can only apply the preset or not it's all or nothing you just throw um you just throw a preset on and you don't really have any control what i like to do normally is load it up in photoshop create a new layer where you apply that preset and then lower the opacity so that you can dial in maybe 20 percent of the preset rather than a hundred percent in this instance i'm actually not going to apply any because i don't like how any of them really look for this image and again this is quite a um, natural scene i don't want to mess with it too much I did just up the um, exposure and also going to up that contrast a little bit plus five <sighs> okay hue saturation luminance again those greens down here could be a bit more green and we're going to do that by doing this but then to counter the overly greenness i'm going to bring the yellows down and you can just see how that particularly on this mountain back here let's just turn this off how much it's warmed those mountains up but we've still got this lovely emerald green in the grass but we've got now these sort of more late summer tones, which is exactly when I was, which is only three weeks ago, ish, 29th of uh, August. So yeah, 
um yeah i think it looks really really nice it's also kind of brought out the true color of the rock here because without that it's like a greeny shade on the rock and rocks are not greeny shade so yeah i think that's looking really good um i'm not going to touch um the rest of the yellows i don't think i'm going to do anything with the oranges actually you know what yeah i'm going to pull them down a little bit not loads just a, just a tad and the blue i'm going to bring down a little bit as well but only a very small amount the further you go the more it goes into that greeny color really don't like that so literally just minus three just to take the edge off that magenta tone which is sort of lingering in there which i don't really like before and after we've gone from a fairly drab scene i mean it still looks nice but it's not that great out of camera and then we've brought in some lovely tones increase that contrast we've got that sky under control with some more detail in the clouds i'm pretty happy with this already um i actually don't think there's much more i want to do but for the sake of the video let's go yeah well, let's let's turn those on don't really need it vignette i'm going to bring back in I actually think a little bit of vignette in this works correcting for that uh lens distortion also corrected for any natural vignette of the lens but sometimes you do want that and certainly in this scene darkening those edges again helps bring the eye to the middle of the scene and that is those grasses and the mountain so i'm fine with that but we're going to go right to the bottom to the camera calibration and this is often with uh presets it's the camera calibration that will often be messed around with to kind of create the color looks um that uh, uh that you might apply so um, you know if we bring this uh, blue primary down you see what this is doing and this is again <laughs> the sort of shot that you often see on uh, those like amazing travel pics uh, Instagram accounts where it's just overly teal and orange and I'll be honest it does very little for me it's not how I like my shots to look if anything I prefer to go the other way but we'll keep it a, we'll keep it in a little bit We'll keep going until the point where I start to not like it, which is there, minus seven, off and on. That's a very subtle shift, but it's enough because I do like what it does to um, the greens uh, a little bit. What is the green primary doing? Let's take that down, take it up. You know what? Let's leave that right bang in the middle and the reds in the top. Again, I think the best place for that is in the center but we can play with the saturation of these as well it doesn't just have to be um have to be the hue maybe upping that saturation on those reds maybe not actually maybe pull that down but maybe in the greens we can push that a little bit further something like that and what about these blue this blue primary pulling that down or back up or back down how about down a touch on here so let's just turn this off this is before we've made these calibration edits this is after before after before after arguably again it's subtle um but that for me is kind of how i like to work in lightroom it's lots of subtle shifts so each one of these little things individually might not make much of a difference but when we look at the whole edit before and after suddenly we've got a very different shot so uh <laughs> anders danielson says teal and orange is the nice name for that style i have others yeah um it is uh weirdly popular um but you know there are people who are doing very very well some of those accounts are the ones that have got like a million followers and people comment on them saying how much they love the color tones but um it doesn't really do it for me I, I love a more natural look to a landscape i love something like this where i could look at the shot and really imagine being there whereas when you see the ones that look a little bit too fake and photoshopped and, and fantasy it, it kind of takes me out of the scene if anything because it doesn't look real so i can't imagine being there um, and certainly if it's places where i've been off, off often i see um uh, that beautiful lake bled in um, in Slovenia with the uh, with the island with the church on it and I've been there and I know exactly how beautiful that that area can be so when I see those shots on 
um, on Instagram where the colors are just wildly all over the place when some preset has been applied. I'm like, well, it's so far removed from how that ever, ever looked that it, it, I just can't imagine being there. And certainly for people who maybe have seen those images and then go and visit it, they may actually be very disappointed. So anyway, enough about my qualms about color use. I'm going to call this shot a day because um, I said I was going to make this one a quick one and I lied. It's been quite a while. But I really hope that these effects have been have been useful. There is certainly more I'd probably do to this shot, but for the sake of argument, let's call it let's call it done. So let's go back into our library. Let's have a quick look at this one. This one will be quick. I promise this one is going to be a lot quicker. So develop straight away. Let's actually straighten it up because we want it to go along this line. This was not taken in Mull. This was taken up in the Cairngorms. But I loved seeing these these trees on the edge of this lake because uh, two reasons, of course. One, we've got this beautiful reflection and obviously a reflection is great. I also kind of like how the way that the trees go kind of up and down, it almost looks like a, a, a an audio waveform. Maybe maybe I'm looking a little too close at that, but um, particularly like that these kind of dead, if they're dead, old trees, uh, these white old weathered trees at the front stand out really strongly against the, the full vibrant green trees in the background. So um, yeah, I thought it, I thought it was quite a compelling image for that reason. Um, right, okay, highlights down a touch. Shadows also down, because we bring the shadows down. Notice if we as we bring them down, we get a bit more contrast, a bit more definition between the trees in the background and those white trees in the foreground, because um, the, the background trees are more in shadow. So emphasize those shadows and the ones in front will stand out. So just before and after, we've moved a couple of sliders a little bit, but already this shot has a lot more pop, which I think looks great. Um, let's have another look at our um, at our presets because we didn't do anything with them before. I talked about them and I moaned about them, but we didn't use them. So maybe let's see if it's something we can put into good use here. You know what, maybe that A5 raw, a little bit of that blue tone in there. Or maybe this. Mm. Tough to decide. Oh, A9 is quite nice. For some reason, I managed to delete A9 raw half. So this filter pack that I got does have a full 100% filter and also a 50% version of it. For some reason, I got rid of the, the 9. So what we'll do is go into it and then we'll try and take some steps back to bring it back to maybe more of a half point. So what it's done is added even more shadow. So let's bring back the shadow that I added to maybe that point. Let's play around slightly with our uh, color temperature and our tint. We've adjusted that a very small amount, but I do think it's made um, a nice difference. As you can see, this has given the image a very definite look. Um, it's no longer sort of the natural greens on there. It's it's gone a very different way. Um, whether that's good or bad is entirely up to you. Sometimes I do like to have a much more defined look to my images than keeping them completely natural. If I wanted them completely natural, I'd pretty much just upload them straight out of camera. But so I like to have done something to them. I kind of feel that yes you want to get your shot as close to what you want in camera but taking the photo is only part of the process. This is where you kind of you can take that snap and make it more of a piece of art. So what was my point? I no longer remember. Uh, okay this is this is okay. I'm going to reduce the contrast quite a bit I think because it's it's gone a little bit too uh, a little bit too much and I think bring it down by minus 25 is just evening out those tones a little bit more and gives it a slightly more um, old filmic look where you haven't crushed those black levels um, which I think looks uh, a little bit nicer. What about the dehaze? What about bringing that down? Mm, tiny amount. Tiny amount looks okay. Okay hues so applying applying that uh, that preset you can see what it's already done to our hues or saturation so we can play these further we can maybe mess around with those greens actually like bringing it up 
bringing back a little bit more emerald in these and then bringing down these yellows. Looks kind of cool. Now we've got a bit more separation in tone between some of the green leaves and some of the older yellow grass and the older uh, uh, orange on the dead trees. I think that looks cool. Before, after, before, after. Yep, we've got a look. Let's also add in, okay, so uh, the preset with applied has added a bit of split toning. But why don't we change that split toning? Go with a little bit of blue in the shadows, cool it down a touch. Something about there. And maybe the highlights add in a bit of orange. So we have completely changed from the preset we applied, which is kind of my point. If you just apply one preset, you're gonna get one look. It's a starting point. You then build on that preset. You still make your edits, but you're starting from a different position, which might just give you a little bit more inspiration. So never just apply and consider it done. Apply it, see how far you can then take it yourself. See what you wanna get from your photo. It's why I love editing in Lightroom because you can just spend, you can lose hours on an evening, which is a good thing, just editing away. And if you're not live streaming, then hey, you can put on a podcast or you can have your editing and then maybe a YouTube video in the background on the side, which is just a really, really nice way of spending some time. And if you've maybe been on holiday and you've taken a load of snaps on your iPhone, just get a comfy chair, cup of cold tea, and uh, sit down and get on with some editing. It's very, very therapeutic, very, very calming. You forget about anything else that's going on. You forget about increasing lockdown rules, anything like that. We're gonna pretend that isn't happening right now because right now we're just looking at landscapes. So as I mentioned before, the cal calibration is where a lot of big changes happen in the presets. So you can see how much it's changed the hues and the saturation of the different primary color channels. So, you know, I'm not gonna mess with these because I like this shot as it is. We've got a good look to it. This is what we started with. Um, a little bit too in the green tint in the white balance and it it looks like a, a, a decent, but it looks like a straight out of camera shot. It looks kind of like a raw file. Here is where we've taken it. It's got a nice more, um, slightly more ethereal mood to it it's got a i'd like to think this has quite an inviting color palette for me this is um even more so than the uh the vibrant beach scene we had before this really makes me want to walk along the footpath which is right through these trees going through the old trees and walking along and just listening to this lake um yeah i think this may entirely down to opinion but that this invites me into the scene more than the other one did so i'm going to consider that a um uh this one done let's go back what time are we on half 10 what time did i start nine o'clock all right <sighs> boats let's do this boat one and let's make this one super quick super super quick so let's start off straight away highlights down in the sky too bright uh we're going to apply a preset this one's going to have much more of a uh, of a filmic look to it so let's go with now let's go with a6 but we're going to apply it at its maximum level no we're not we're going to apply it at its half level not brave enough okay we're going to warm this scene up in the uh, temperature we're also going to add a little bit of purple because we want it to have that lovely autumnal uh, light coming down shadows we're really going to bring down i know what you're thinking we've lost too much light on the boat you're right so we're going to bring in a radial filter this time upping the exposure i'm going to put it right over the top of the boat make it quite a big filter um, because we're going to feather it right out, which is going to help blend that light in. So already we can see that it's it, it fits much more naturally in the scene, but we've gone overboard. So we're going to bring it back down to about this. Highlights down just a touch, maybe up those shadows. No, 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 shadows actually keep on. We can keep those down. 
So hopefully that blends a little bit, but it just looks like the sun is just kind of catching on the boat in a way that it wasn't before. I think maybe I brought the shadows in the scene down a bit too much generally. So let's go with something like this. Um, okay, our, uh, what's it even called? Graduated filter, thank you. Um, we're going to bring in two of those again, one at the bottom, uh, darkening down the lower part of the frame. Again, drawing the eye to the boat. And we're going to bring one in on these clouds because these clouds are super dramatic. I'm going to bring the color temp down because our changes before have made the sky look a little bit brown. Um, so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to rescue that color as well as add in some cool contrast, some cool clarity. And now suddenly, boom, we've got dramatic, moody, lovely, stormy clouds, um, which is exactly what we had because about 10 minutes after this, it wazzed it down all over me. So look where we've gone. From a snap, already with just a few minutes of tweaking, dramatic, moody scene. Um, let's see what else we might want to do. Let's uh, bring this brush in, up the exposure, and bring back down that flow to a low amount. And we're going to paint in a little bit on this grass here, a little bit over here, a bit more on the mountain bit more here just where we just want those kisses of light down here maybe a little bit on this side of the boat because it's a bit too shadowy because we've we've lowered our shadows quite a lot in this scene so a lot of the landscape itself is quite dark so just by adding in a bit more no nope, that's too much something around there it's just dappling that light back over where it already was but bringing keeping those details in place you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and call this shot done. I'm happy with that, but I'm gonna call it done after one more thing that I wanna do, and that's add in some blues into those shadows just to really hammer home that filmic effect. So without, looks like this, with, we've got just a bit of blue in the shadows, which I just think finishes it off nicely. What about those highlights? Can we add anything in the highlights? No, let's add nothing to the highlights. The highlights can stay as they are. It's just a bit of toning in the shadows. That's all I want to do. That is it. That's done. Before, afterwards. Told you this one would be quick. Um, it was quick, but I think it's made a big difference. Uh, Gentle Mandrill says, wow, that difference though is really cool. Thank you. Uh, Chai Violet says it could be a movie poster. A movie poster about one lonely poor boat called Graham. I made up the Graham part. Right, okay, I think it's probably time for me to call it a day. So I'm going to do some quick edits on the last one. And for me, this is my hero image from the whole scene. It is basically the same scene as this one, as you can tell from the mountain and from this. But I've moved my shooting angle. And crucially, this was taken almost an hour later i'd gone back to my car sat down opened a beer um had some sausages and then the evening light really kicked off so i had to come back out and this time my composition was wanting to bring in these rocks here in the foreground and also use this big um sort of inlet of water uh, as a reflection point for the mountain so we get great reflections as well so i was really really pleased with how this came out um i mean even out of camera i'm really pleased with this shot i remember looking at it on the back of my camera and going yes, got a good shot um but there's loads that we can do to improve it i want to up the exposure slightly because again it's pretty dark but not too much because it is a evening scene so if we go too bright then you kind of lose that sort of shadowy evening feel but we do need to bring it up a little bit so i think somewhere around there about half a stop of light um our colors are very off i don't know what my um, white balance was on my camera at the time but it's very green we've got a, a sort of a sickly tint to the sky so we move it and here is when we really go big on our evening colors we add in a lot more of the magenta tone to our tint Magenta is a, a great tone to have in your sunsets because as you can already see, suddenly everything's gone much more evening um, 
temperature looks great and we can warm it up as well but we don't want to go too much you might think oh the warmer you go the more even it's going to get but it, it very quickly goes a weird yellow so actually you don't want to go too much uh, with your temperature I think the biggest change has been in the tint in bringing that uh, sort of those magenta tones in uh, so before and after before and after already I think we've got uh, a lot more going on our shadows let's bring those bring those down a little bit our whites we can bring up um, just have a look at our presets and just scroll through these in case there's any I actually do want to apply oh you know quite like I do quite like this but maybe we could apply that that sort of blue uh, shadows that I think um, this is applying maybe we could apply those ourselves in the shadows in split toning so I'm going to bring in this blue I'm going to position it more towards the magenta side than the green side because again keeping those that slight magenta shift in in this scene I think it's going to it's going to look quite good I'm just going to bring the saturation slider up maybe to about there Let's, let's bring it away from the magenta a bit more. We turn it off and on, off and on. Oh yeah, I really like that. I think that looks really nice. Okay, uh, we've definitely got some good evening color. Let's bring in uh, a slight darkening down here. Don't need much because it's already fairly dark down here, particularly in the rocks but still a bit bright in the water reflection here. So that's just gonna help control that. And another one in the sky. Now I don't wanna go dramatic with the sky because this is a soft, very gentle evening sunset scene. It's about peace and tranquility, not about drama and epic clouds. So we don't wanna go big on the clarity. We don't wanna go big on the dehaze. We wanna do very little of either, just enough to kind of just pick out some of the wispy details on that so maybe a little bit more something like that um, could maybe even uh, you know what just leave everything else exactly as it was basically like that a small small change but again I think it's just enough yeah I like it okay what I do want to do though is just to kind of emphasize this uh, reflection a little bit more and I'm going to do that by uh, increasing our exposure and upping the clarity a little bit and bringing that flow back up just so I can paint it in a bit quicker and I'm going to paint it around here not everywhere maybe we can play with these sliders a bit more bring it up shadows I can bring down a touch whites can come up maybe a little bit more clarity and as we do as you bring that clarity up it works really well in water because you it brings out more of those like little ripples which I think looks really nice and it's also bringing out uh, more of the reflected rock detail but because it's reflected detail it's soft detail so it doesn't get that crunchy feel if I go down to here and start adding clarity look how quickly everything goes overly sharp and contrasty and 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 weird i really don't like applying it to the whole scene um so just applying it on the water i think looks really really nice uh, let's just turn this off and then on just so we can see what we've done it just makes the reflection a bit more obvious more like it's, it's supposed to be part of the scene so i do um yeah i really like that i'm going to keep that i'm going to keep that as it is and this time I'm gonna oh, I shouldn't have closed that I want another brush same again exposure bit of clarity and I'm gonna paint it with a smaller brush on the edges on the highlight edges of the mountains not where the shadows is where the Sun is hitting the mountains I'm gonna emphasize that Sun a bit more by just painting this in like this So let's just turn that off 
and turn it off. Look how it's just sculpted those mountains. That light is already there, so we're not painting in light that doesn't exist or trying to trying to uh, fake a sunset, fake directional light. You cannot fake directional light on mountains. You can't put a, a flash on there and expect it to light up an entire mountain. Flashes of that power do not exist. Well, they do. It's called the sun. Um, so it's just adding an extra little bit of pop to kind of make this scene uh, something uh, just a bit more you know what I'm trying to say just a bit more it's taking us there and adding a little bit it's pushing it over you know nature is taking it one bit and we're just pushing it over the line and I'm talking absolute horse nonsense um, but it's just our before and after um, you know we've got this um, we've got uh, this sort of greeny scene too dark uh, I don't think it really gives off the impression of sunset in quite the way that it actually was a sunset this however does we've got beautiful tones in there I think maybe what I could do having a look at the before and after is um, I'm going to close down this tool uh, maybe tone down that tint a little bit to there and up our temperature a little bit more there we go sunset before green now here we are because we added in that sort of bluey magenta -y tone in our shadows it's meant that our magenta shift in the tint started to become a little bit ott so here we are we've got this and this is it that is it i don't think i want to do anything more to that um i'm really pleased with this shot it was a beautiful evening and i don't want to go overboard with a shot like this there are probably are many more things i could do i would maybe take this over into photoshop and i would um i would try and layer up different effects so that i can have uh, that more fine grain control the one thing i might do that's when i'm kind of taking a taking a slight step back as it were to view it more as a whole this patch of grass over here is just a touch bright it's probably the brightest thing in the scene except for maybe this part of the sky and so i'm wondering if it's maybe drawing the eye too much so let's get a adjustment brush bring that exposure down big brush and i'm just going to paint in onto that and because again we're using a slightly low flow it's blending in quite nicely it doesn't just look like you're just painting a big line of black it is sort of steadily darkening down that area it's only a small amount but i actually think that has made quite a big difference to my eye maybe other people wouldn't have noticed that maybe only photographers would really go oh yeah i think that bit's a bit too bright but really anyone looking at it would never notice but to me that has made a difference um the crop I haven't done anything with the crop yet. I think it does need straightening ever so slightly. And maybe this could even stand to be something like a 16, oh, sorry, could stand to be a 16 9 aspect ratio. Because again, everything in the scene is kind of middle focused. We've got quite a, a lot of empty sky at the top and quite a lot of unused space at the bottom but we've got all these rocks here we've got the mountains that are spreading across the scene it's almost panoramic so i don't want to go panoramic i don't, I don't want to go to a very very wide thing but actually 16.9 looks good i think yeah i like that and um well maybe not maybe we could stand to get rid of some of this because all of this down here and this is why it's important to kind of learn how to critique your own photos because to me we've got this big shale bank here and it isn't doing anything and yes we've got some mountain but the mountain of focus is here maybe a little bit this one so this down here could stand to go so what if we went back to let's say even a four by three or no original and just bring it in instead like this something like Something like this. 
so we've still got kind of our rule of thirds only very vaguely paying attention i mean frankly if i was going to do it properly then you know the line of this there and as you can see you don't really want that so instead I'm, I'm sort of shifting it around to a point where i think visually it makes sense this corner is connecting maybe with these rocks but yes that is better than the 16.9 i think we've still we've we've cropped away some of this wasted space at the bottom we've cropped away some of the wasted sky but also this was wasted and this grassy area was kind of wasted on the side as well so again it's focused our scene focused our composition and made sure that the actual important elements of the image are the ones that are actually in the frame there's no sense in keeping all this extra detail which is only going to detract the eye from what you really want to show off and i think at that point and also at nearing two hours is where i'm going to call it a day um, I'm going to be doing more of these streams, so do please let me know what you liked about this, what you didn't. I um, had no intention of trying to blitz through this sort of edit in 30 minutes. This is not, as I say, supposed to be a necessarily a tutorial to really teach. Hopefully, it's just generally enjoyable, and if you can, excuse me, learn some techniques learn some ideas or just take general inspiration away then all the better but um, it's supposed to be a little bit just i suppose just a bit of a relaxing watch um but i had some ideas i thought maybe i could provide some of these raw files on a server somewhere in advance and maybe those of you who are interested could could download those and maybe even edit them along with me uh, or maybe even do completely different edits and then send me them in and i could maybe post those to um, my instagram stories or something um, and show them off kind of how other people have have tried to tackle my photos um, so let me know if that would be of interest or maybe even sending in your photos and i could um, uh, have a stab at editing shots that, that you guys have taken i'm kind of open for for anything as i say these these streams i'm not planning on being necessarily focused on like the education side as it were I, I plan on kind of leaving that for my my weekend videos where i can very much focus on here are the tools you need to do exactly this task whereas this as you've seen it's general workflow it's it's a bit of an insight into um generally how i approach my photos which i'm, I'm really hoping has been first of all enjoyable to watch and if you've made it uh almost two hours in then um i'm hoping you've, you've taken something away from this um but if also if you have taken some uh actual insight away then then great um maybe on the next one i'll come to some of these other ones i showed this earlier this could be quite a cool edit to do uh this one as well i liked but we've already seen some uh some sunset rocks and um this one of just a, a nice sort of rock in a waterway again slow shutter for a bit of water blur um which we'll come to you um, on another occasion i'm going to um quickly dive into the into the comments last time uh growley says that's a good crop uh going back to going back to this shot um the shale bank brings contrast to the photos yeah and i think um it does it does bring nice contrast having this sort of shadow here but i just had way too much of it before so we needed to kind of just bring that uh, that crop in get rid of what was basically wasted details only by kind of studying your shots and thinking what is it that i really want and maybe i could have done that on the day i could have zoomed in or shifted my angle but sometimes it is good to shoot with a little bit of extra space just so you've got that room to crop you've got a little bit of room maybe to tilt your image if you need to and then crop in accordingly so sometimes it is is good to take a slightly wider approach uh uh Growley also says it's a good relaxing watch indeed um uh scuttlebutt 101 says i agree bless you mrs <laughs> mrs Ma mrs maple um shy violet says it'd be nerve-wracking but i'd love to send a photo um cool well i think i'll um i think i'll consider doing that it, it might be something that I, I put off for a little while um my channel is is growing and i and i'm hugely grateful for all of you who have um who have tuned into this but I, i'm not sure that i'd have that many people uh who would be super bothered about me about me doing that right now so maybe 
maybe give it a few months and uh, if I hit 5,000 subscribers as a little milestone, maybe that's something I'll, I'll do. But certainly if you'd be interested in, in editing along um, with me and getting these files and let me know. Uh, Gentle Mandel says, I really enjoy these streams, even though I wasn't able to catch that many, uh, even though I wasn't able to catch that many live. Um, they're really soothing, relaxing, and I learned something. It's nice to get a sneak peek how pros use Lightroom. Well, that is great. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I think that is going to bring me to an end. I've been going for two hours. Um, I am exhausted. Um, so I think it's probably time for me to um, finish off my twirl and go straight to bed. So thank you again so much for joining me. A big thanks again to Luke Westaway for um, helping in promoing people and sending them over here. Um, if you do, of course, uh, have any friends who you think would be interested in this, then send them this way. Um, I am a very, very small channel, but I am uh, hoping to grow it as much as, as, much as possible. Um, I absolutely love doing it. Um, it. I do not make any money from it. In fact, it costs me uh, far more than it, it would earn. Uh, to do all this stuff so it's 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 definitely something that I'm doing because I just love it um, so I'm, I'm very grateful to everyone who's kind of getting on board uh, so far so yeah um, if you are interested in, in what I'm doing if you are uh, if you have specific questions do always please get into the comments um, answer those I do try and read every single thing that goes on there even the bad ones um, I don't read them; I just delete them. Uh, but um, uh, obviously, and I will, and I will try and address those if possible. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for um, for tuning in and for watching. But I'm going to call it a day there, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.